So you're a new player who wants to try out Destiny, or a returning player who has no idea what's going on in the current state of the game. Here's what you need to know. In this video, we're going to discuss what's free to play in the game and what's not. Catch you up in the story, explain how everything works, and give you a tour around the game. Destiny No Lie is a pretty hard game to get into currently, especially when you're just tossed into the ocean with no lifeboat or life jacket. So the goal of this video is to hopefully make those things a little bit easier. Timestamps are on screen right now and down below you can scrub through to certain sections if you'd like. And let's jump right into it with the New Light experience. And to reclaim our lost worlds. We're here. The Traveler. The last city. Welcome home. Destiny 2 is available on all major platforms. You can pay for expansions and seasons for throughout the year, or you can play for free. Here's the current content model for Destiny. One major expansion a year, four seasons and events like Halloween and Christmas celebrations sprinkled in between. Bungie has been releasing an expansion a year and four seasons along with it. Expansions will stick around moving forward so nothing is going to be vaulted moving on, but seasons are removed when a new expansion releases. The only way you can purchase seasons is through the season pass, which is only included in the deluxe edition of that year's expansion. So buying the deluxe edition for Witch Queen will get you those four seasons for that year of 2022. Keep in mind, as a new expansion releases, those four seasons from the previous year go away, but you'll get four new ones. So if you buy Lightfall's Deluxe Edition, you're going to get those four seasons for 2023. Here is what free players have access to. So if you're new to Destiny, you may be asking, okay, let's start with the first story, the base game. Well, the Red War campaign, which came out with Destiny 2 and some expansions since, have been vaulted. Now, I did just mention that stuff going forward is not going to be vaulted. Bungie talked about this recently in one of their live streams. But here is the list of current expansions of the game and where we are now. What's available to you? Here's what it looks like when you first boot up the game. You'll see many pop-up messages and then you will be prompted to create a character. Hunters are stealthy and love to stick to the wilds. Titans punch anything they come across. And warlocks love to use their space magic. You can create three characters on a platform and delete characters whenever you'd like to make a new one. After you create your character, you'll be tossed into the New Light Experience, a multi-mission intro for new players. The story of Destiny is massive, but this will introduce you to the basics. If you want a summary video to introduce you to the entire story of Destiny, well, luckily I have you covered for that as well. This video on screen, you can click at the top right, will lead you up to the Witch Queen expansion in terms of story. All the seasons, all the content, even from Destiny 1. I'm currently producing an updated version of this for Lightfall, next year's expansion coming out in February, but if you want to learn the story, this is a great place to start. There will also be an in-game timeline you can see to sort of summarize the events a little bit further, but you won't be able to access this until you complete the New Light quest. This intro quest is pretty self-explanatory. The game will introduce the basics to you like the controls, the layout of the director and UI, and also how to navigate Destiny's open world. From here, everything else was kind of a breeze finishing the New Light quest, and once you complete that, the rest of the game will open up to you. So yeah, the quest will introduce those basics, but if you want to go a little bit more in-depth, let's take a look at that. So this is what it looks like when you're playing Destiny if you have your UI turned on. In Destiny, you can hold three weapons at a time. Your primary, your secondary, or energy, and then your heavy. You simply tap the swap weapons button to switch between your primary and energy, and then you hold down that button to bring out your heavy weapon. At the bottom of the screen, in the left corner, at the far left, you'll have your grenade ability. If you press this, well, it throws a grenade. The middle icon will be your melee. For me, I currently have a smoke bomb equipped, and once that is gone, if I press the button again, I have my default melee. To the right of that, we got your class ability. 
For me, I will dodge around because I'm a hunter if I double tap my B button because I'm on Xbox. Holding the back button or escape on PC will bring out your ghost. From here, you can summon your sparrow vehicle once you unlock it and drive around to your heart's content, or you can return to orbit and go back to the menu screens. If you open the director on a location, you'll be able to see the map of the area. Right here, we are in the Cosmodrome, so we see the map of that respective location. Above your weapons and abilities down here, you have your super ability. Once this bar is charged up, you'll get an indication on screen and it will be yellow. This alert clarifies when you can activate your super ability. For me, I have Tether currently equipped. The Director is Destiny's menu system. Here you can inspect your character, in-game store, settings, deploy to new locations, and even check your quests and inventory. Destiny's menu system has two main screens. The director here when you press the back buttons, or inventory when you press start. I believe the buttons are escape and tab on PC, but it's been a while for me as I use controller. If you open the director first, you can see destinations to travel to, and all playlists on the first page. To the left, a map of the current location if you are spawned on one. Your quests, current season pass, and the in-game store. If you press start and open your character inventory, it looks like this. Your character has weapons over here on the left and your armor on the right. Up top is your super ability or subclass which gives you a bunch of magic powers. And if you inspect this further, you can even customize it with some more opportunities. This is how you customize your subclass. You can change your grenade, melee abilities, super, and even your jump. Not gonna go into everything here and try and confuse you, but this is where you customize the Guardian to your liking. For example, I love to use Triple Jump and a Void Hunter subclass so I can go invisible. Destiny's weapons have damage types, and so do enemy shields sometimes. Arc, Solar, Void, and Stasis. These elements match those of your subclasses and are crucial when it comes to some higher difficulty activities like Grandmaster Nightfalls. Not all weapons have a damage type like this, but just wanted to throw this out there to tell you what these little symbols mean. Moving down on this page, we have some extras like your Sparrow, Speeder Bike, Emotes, and so on. Moving over to the right tab, you have your inventory, which holds currency and some other items you acquire. To the left of your character, you have triumphs, basically in-game achievements. Some of these award items, but overall they give you a triumph score to basically show off your achievements in-game. And the last two pages are collections and clan. Collections, you can see a list of all the items you've acquired in the game and even reacquire some of these if you accidentally lost them. And the clan tab is pretty self-explanatory. If you're in a clan, this is sort of your hub. After completing the main missions for the New Light intro quest, you'll be brought to the tower for the first time in a mission, which will introduce you to all the vendors and give you a little tour of Destiny's social hub. For those that are a bit confused, I'm going to give you my own tour right now. Once you spawn into the tower normally, to your left will be the Postmaster. The Postmaster will have messages for you when needed, and also any gear you forgot to collect on the field will be sent here for you to reacquire. To the right of the Postmaster is Tess Everis of Eververse. This is the game's microtransaction store. Remember, you can also access this in the director menus if you wish, or here in the tower. You can use silver, which costs real life money, or bright dust earned in game to purchase items if you wish. You can also purchase expansions and other content from here to make it a little bit easier instead of looking at like the Microsoft store and being all confused. To the right of Eververse, we have Commander Zavala. Zavala is one of the most important characters to the city story-wise and runs the strikes. In his inventory, you can see various strike gear and a level system for the strikes at the top. Next, just around the corner, we got Lord Shax, the Crucible PvP handler. Shax does the same thing as Zavala vendor-wise, but he's for the multiplayer PvP where you play other guardians. Many of these vendors also have bounties to further level up your respective ranks and XP with them beyond just playing those activities themselves. Next to Shaxx, we have the Vault, pretty self-explanatory. 
Here you can stash your gear so it's not all cluttered in your inventory. Put away weapons, armor, anything you can think of. The vault is nice, but Destiny also has a collections page in the director where you can simply reacquire an item for the price of in-game currency. More on that can be found in the timestamps. This is also a good time to mention that Destiny has third-party apps and companion apps for the phone and PC. The Bungie app and others like the Ishtar Commander allow you to pull items from your vault directly to your character no matter where you are in the game. Did you forget a bounty? Pull up the Destiny app and acquire bounties from Orbit. Need a piece of gear that's in your vault or on another character? Easy. Pull up Ishtar and pop it right into your inventory. The Bungie app and other third-party ones have many details about your character and all the vendors, and I'll leave some of those links to those apps below. Next to the vault, you have the Monument to Lost Lights statue. As we've mentioned, stuff in Destiny 2 has been vaulted in the past, and the only current way to acquire some of this stuff, unless they add it back in, is from this vendor. Completing some higher endgame activities will give you this currency to purchase these items. Just beyond the vaults, we have the Gunsmith Banshee, who gives you new weapons and can upgrade current ones with catalysts. And in front of Banshee, we have Master Rahul, the tower's cryptarch. In Destiny, you collect these things called engrams. Master Rahul here will basically decrypt those and give you a piece of gear. So in the tower, we have three sections. The courtyard here is where we spawn. Then you can go to the left, to the hangar, or to the right at the bazaar. Let's first go there past Banshee and meet Ikora Ray. Loading into the bazaar, we have Ikora Ray, the Warlock Vanguard leader, who sometimes has new abilities and supers for you. This is where you'll upgrade your subclasses even further. Next to Ikora is Soraya Hawthorne, the clan vendor. Yes, you can create a clan in Destiny or join one, and get many benefits for doing so. More gear, XP, and buffs, and the game's always more fun if you have players and friends to join. Pulling a 180 directly behind these characters, we have a staircase that leads down to a couple of other vendors. On the right, we have Ada-1. Ada assists you in transmogging your gear for your guardian. You know, keeping stats but making it look the way you want. And Drifter can be found in this corner room. Drifter is the vendor for the Gambit game mode, the mode that combines PvE and PvP together. To fast travel in the tower, you simply open the director and select these little arrow icons. You can also do this on other locations. Let's head back to the courtyard and then go left to the hangar. In the hangar, we can find two vendors, Amanda Holiday, who has Sparrow Speeders and Ships, and Saint-14, a vendor for a competitive PvP mode that is available on the weekends called the Trials of Osiris. The tower is your hub for everything you need in Destiny. Occasionally, other vendors will pop up in the tower for events, like on Fridays, Xur shows up an alien dude with some weapons and armor for you, and other limited events will also pop up, like the Iron Banner Monthly, which is a Crucible event, and currently, as you can see here, the Halloween event called Festival of the Lost. So, what can free players do in Destiny? Currently, you have access to all patrol locations, so all open world areas, including the lost sectors in them, the little hidden dungeons, and public events, which can be seen on the map. You also have access to Year One Strikes, the Prophecy Dungeon, the Vault of Glass Raid, and Dares of Eternity. If you buy expansions and seasons, you can of course take part in everything the game has to offer, but this is the free player experience. You also get access to the intro battle pass, but we'll talk about that in the leveling and power section. Here's a good tip for new players. If it's not currently gone, this was a limited time thing. 
In the helm, you can find a gift for new players to help you out with some powerful gear. You can acquire all of these items here if this chest still exists and it's right in front of you when you spawn. Here's a list of all of the content in Destiny. It's a pretty huge list. In your director, here is where you can access these activities. You can find the strike playlist here. Gambit right in the middle, a mode where you fight guardians and AI combatants. Crucible PvP where you fight other guardians on this side. The Legends tab to the right of the Crucible is where you can find Legacy Destiny content. This is content Bungie has either decided to put in this tab because it's obsolete or more obsolete, or stuff that was added from Destiny 1, like the Vault of Glass Raid, and also King's Fall. Dungeons and raids can be loaded from their respective locations. So if you're looking for the Deep Stone Crypt raid, that takes place on Europa. Just hover over Europa and find the raid there. Same thing with various dungeons. Let's talk about leveling and power. Destiny's current level system gives you a power level. At each time period in the game, there is a cap for you to reach. For example, during this current season, the cap is 1580. To level up your power, you acquire better gear. Once you jump into the game, you get greens and blues, then eventually purples and exotics, which have epic perks and abilities of their own. Each tier of gear will only level you so far, though. For example, if you have a full set of blue gear, you'll most likely eventually get capped, and then you'll need to acquire that purple legendary gear. Exotics is what makes Destiny feel like a blast. Epic weapons and armor that allow you to customize your playstyle like Galahorn. You can only equip one piece of exotic armor or weapon at a time. So I mentioned that level cap, currently at 1580. Each expansion that is released, the power level lately has been increasing by 50, and each season by 10. So you may be asking, okay, so if 1580 is the cap, why are you 1593? So although there is a cap, you can still increase your rank each season with the seasonal artifact, which will go away when a new season releases. This can be found in your inventory, where you can see a bunch of new mods that you can unlock once you level it up each time. So if I'm level 13, that gives me 13 ranks above 1580, that cap, which explains why I'm 1593. In Destiny, you can also infuse your gear. So if I have a piece of gear that I like the stats or look of, but have another that's higher power, I can infuse that higher power into my current piece to make it that level instead. You can also upgrade your armor in Destiny and equip mods to make them have higher stats and perks. When you inspect your character, you will see these numbers, which are influenced by the armor you wear. If you have a piece of armor with higher mobility or movement, this number will be higher. And you can equip different mods to help with this as well. Speaking of seasonal content, let's talk about that. That artifact will give you mods and increases your power so you can take part in higher difficulty strikes and activities like raids. At the start of each season, you get a new artifact, and those levels would bring you back down to the cap. So I would be back at 1580 for the start of next season, and 1590 would be the cap. Seasonal content has its own hub called the Helm, which can be accessed in the director here just above the tower. The Helm has a couple of rooms and a main hallway. Once you spawn in, you have your Postmaster and Vaults to your side, so you don't have to head to the tower every time, and usually there will be a seasonal vendor in one of these rooms. Currently, there's three of them because we're in the third season of this year. 
From these vendors, you get seasonal quests and interact with characters to tell you the story of that season, and it all takes place in the Helm and sometimes other small social space areas. Destiny 2, yes, has a battle pass. There is a free-to-play track and also a premium one which you can pay for. You level up this battle pass by playing, earning XP and completing seasonal challenges which are found in your director. Battle passes will award materials, armor, ornaments, emotes, and so on. Cool cosmetics, basically. Don't forget the exotic weapons, though, on top of that. What about some other resources to help you in the game? Now, Destiny will be getting an in-game LFG looking for group system coming in 2023, but if you are lost, there are some other options out there. You can join a clan if you wish. Xbox has its own built-in LFG system to help you find guardians and assist you, and sometimes just sending a message to a fellow guardian will spark a friendship. Who knows, there are many helpful players out there in this community that I'm sure are willing to assist some new players. I've also linked down below Bungie's new player guide if you want further information, but with that being said, this rounds up our guide on new and returning players coming to Destiny 2. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. If I don't answer them, someone else will, and I hope you enjoy your time with this game. I love it, that's why I cover and make videos here, even on the story. And if you want to see some of that content, subscribe and stick around for a bit. Anyway, Guardians, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.